All right, what is up? Welcome back, guys. Got another exciting brake testing video here today. Uh, I would have had this up sooner, but uh, last time I recorded this, I didn't realize that it was completely out of focus. So I had to wait until I was back at the apartment so that I could re-record this video so that it would all be in focus. But I have done a second round of brake testing at our Session. I didn't go this time. This time I sent in uh, all of my samples to have them brake test them. But uh, we got them all back and I have looked through them and had some honest reactions in that video, but it's all out of focus. So it's kind of hard to watch because it's all just this one take <laughs> of everything. But we'll go through it again. The box is already open. So we got five samples in here, I think. Yep, three, uh, three Kern Mantle ropes and two sewing things that I did. So we're just gonna go through this box and do an unboxing and go over the results real quick. And I'll probably do an in-depth video of these uh, splices and how they broke in a future video. But right now we're just gonna kinda go through them. We had some very exciting results. Uh, this will kind of, some of these splices will be an evolution of some of the splices I did in the first brake test video. So if you want more information, please go check out those videos. But yeah, also at the end of some of those in-depth videos, you may see how these splices were kind of thought up and made. Uh, so that might be fun to see. But when I do an in-depth video, I'll go over again how I spliced them and what problems I had and yada, yada, yada. So, all right, that being said, let's uh, dig into these splices. This was just at the top of the box, but uh, this is kind of the most exciting one. Uh, I was super excited to test this splice and see how well it would fare. So uh, I did that Kern Master spl splice last time where I spliced it as a double braid rope. However, this time I spliced some Kern Master the same way you would splice B-Line. Basically just a core only splice with the cover whipped back on since this is a braided core and it splices very similarly to like 10X Tech or other uh, like 12 carrier or whatever, just hollow braid ropes. It's a hollow braid core, so I was able to d double locking Brummel splice the core and then uh, whip the cover onto the core. And my concern with this is that the whipping would break and the core would shear up and the cover would shear off the core before it broke, but they broke in the same spot at the same time, which is great news because I was worried that, I mean, I'm sure with wear, it's possible that this whipping could go bad and the cover would start to come off the core, but this is a much faster way to splice Kern Master. This is a, a Yale Kern Master Bifrost. It is a all polyester, uh, rope it is a kern mantle with a braided core so that's what makes it special and stand out is that you can splice it in a fun way like this and i'll uh, in, a, in the in-depth video for this i'll show you exactly how i spliced this one but that was super great and guess what it broke even higher than the double braid splice we got uh seven thousand pounds with this one that is pretty awesome was very excited to see those results with this splice. now let's move on to the next couple kern mantles so this one, the HTB splice did not hit the ON-C rating. So basically with this splice, I just spliced it very similar to Line, but uh, tried to extend the taper quite a bit, tried to create a better overlap of the uh, core strands with each other. However, it still broke exactly the same way. It broke in the cross air over area. We can even see the uh, tapered cover popping out here. And uh, this is what I was worried about. I uh, had some issues splicing this, and I wasn't sure if I was right or not, but it would appear that the cores did not extend back as far as I thought they had. I think I made a mistake when I was tapering, or uh, milking back the core and tapering the core strands, or milking the cover onto the core in the eye and tapering off the core strands. And because of that, it broke in the uh, crossover area once again. So not a super successful splice. Uh, well, it would be successful if it hit the right amount of poundage and still broke in that spot, but uh, we did not hit the ANSI standard. We only got uh, 4,500 pounds out of this rope. So, hmm, oh well, you know, it's whatever. Uh, we'll switch up our splice a little bit and see if we can make it better. Now, moving on, we are going to a mercury rope, which this I did uh, a little bit differently. It wasn't as simple of a splice as the HTP splice. 
but the goal was once again to get as much uh, overlap of the uh, cores as possible and we got this to break a different way. This one did hit the ANSI standards, but just barely. We got 5,400 pounds out of this, like on the nose, 5,411 pounds, which is pretty great. Uh, but also like this rope has a breaking strength of like 8,600 pounds. It'd be pretty nice if I could make something that was uh, strong enough to, you know, make it to the same strength or whatever as the breaking thing. Just like uh, same, the splice have the same MBS as the rope nearly which is what happened with this Kern Master which is pretty sweet but with uh, this Samson we just got 5400 pounds uh, it failed in the eye which we have not seen yet with this Drenaline style back splice with my splices I've seen it happen other Kern Mantle splices but that, that's encouraging it means that my crossover was strong enough that this rope was not going to break in the crossover instead we had failure in the eye which is interesting because I thought so this had more core strands in it than uh, the Drenaline splice, uh, ratio-wise. And they were breaking in the crossover, so I was like, if I make them crossover enough, then they should retain their strength. But also, I added more core strands here, and I thought, even though it's 55% of the core strands, I thought in basket it would give me the test rating I wanted. But I guess not quite, really. So to get the strongest possible splice, I'm just, since these weren't that hard to splice, like it's not that hard to splice these. They slide through very nicely. They have very slippery cores, very slippery sheaths. So as long as you do it right, it's really easy to back splice these. So I'm thinking maybe the next splice I do with Mercury, I'll do 80% uh, of the core through the eye. It's definitely gonna give it more the appearance of a double braid splice where it's all fat in the eye. But yeah, we'll see We'll see if that works. That's, that's gonna be the next step since now it's breaking in the eye. Now we need more cores in the eye. So to get it to break properly, we'll have to add more cores into the balance. Now, moving on from the ropes. So I have this uh, awesome sewing machine that I just got from my aunt. Uh, it is a Juki uh, kind of like semi-professional quilting machine and I was very happy to get it. I was talking about all the heavy duty sewing I was doing on one of the singers that Katie has that I think came from a garage sale, which it, it does all right, but uh, it would, this machine that uh, Mary gave us is a uh, straight stitch machine, so I can't do like bar tacks and zigzags and stuff, but I can do uh, W shape patterns. So I made some sewing samples with W-shaped patterns to get tested to see how well it would work to use straight stitch patterns to break test things. And we got some pretty good results. Ooh, I won't go over this one first. But the, the main reason I've been doing this is I wanna see how strong I can make my sewing. I'm fascinated with uh, sewing or like creating life support. I mean, I, I would have to put a lot of money into it to break or be, get to a point where I could fabricate something that I could break enough and then say that I could trust myself to, or trust my life to it. But uh, it, at the same time, you know, it's like, it's kind of like splicing. It's kind of not like splicing. Like it's definitely more involved than splicing. There's different steps to take, but I just, I just wanted to see what it's capable of. Right now I don't climb on anything that I sewed myself other than my harness, but, or my, the leg loops on my harness, but none of the life support points are sewed. They're all tied in an acceptable manner. But the first thing I did was I wanted to make, if I made, my goal is to make like a super lightweight uh, rope bridge uh, tree climbing harness. And so I wanted to try making some uh, webbing side Ds. So this is just webbing that was passed through some acrylic tubing. And this was tested in basket. So these were on a clamp. And then the rest of this belt went around a bollard. And uh, this broke at 6,000 pounds. Yeah, 6,000 pounds. The MBS of this webbing is only 3,500 pounds. This is just polyester uh, flat webbing. It was a failure essentially in the webbing. This wasn't a stitch failure because you can see it broke kind of at that bar tack and just kind of fluffed up around and pulled out through there. So it definitely made the webbing fail. And yeah. 
six thousand pounds that's almost yeah that's almost double the mbs so that was pretty great to see but the other thing i was working on is i was like if i'm gonna make a harness i have to have a way to make a waist belt so i just went with kind of like a standard double back uh harness style this was just to see how much my waist belt could hold uh this will be a little bit different on a tree climbing like a saddle tree climbing harness because on a rock climbing harness, so I just sewed this, I patterned this off of a rock climbing harness. So you can see that would be like where the belay loop goes. And then you have your buckle right here. And then this would be the back belt that would come around and be threaded through the buckle. And I knew that this was gonna fail at the buckle. I knew that the sewing would be just fine. So I did it just like a harness. We got uh, two bar tacks on either side of the belay piece. And then uh, some, uh, where this is doubled back, we just got like four inches of W pattern stitching. And we didn't get much damage in the belay loop area. Uh, just that little like tuft up there a little bit. But it, it broke at the piece passing through the buckle. Now this passed through the buckle and then it was bar tacked into a loop to prevent the end from pulling back through the buckle. And you can see that this was pulled all the way through until it reached that bar tack and then that is when the webbing failed now this buckle is just a cheap stainless steel buckle that i got from a marine supply store i think uh just for use with like flat webbing or whatever just some marine flat webbing probably like sunbrella or blah 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 whatever uh but yeah so it kind of failed uh at the buckle at that stitching and not at a very high poundage this broke at 1200 pounds and here I'll show you what a regular uh, brake test looks like so this is a regular brake test let's see if I can get it to focus right there so you can see we just have the force increasing over time and then finally you get the snap it hits its peak and then drops so that's where the product failed that was the one for the side D's now when we look at this graph you can see that it had multiple peaks so that kind of tells me that the webbing was slowly sliding through the buckle until it couldn't anymore and that's when it finally failed. So part of that could be that the webbing wasn't thick enough for the buckle or the buckle wasn't thick enough or wide enough for the webbing because ideally wanted, what I wanted to do is I wanted to double back this on a buckle. When you have a typical tri-slide buckle on a climbing harness, you do a double back. So you do kind of into the, you, the adjuster and around the middle post and then you come back over the last post and the middle post and pass it through and that's just the way you uh, thread it to prevent this from loosening when you're climbing it's super effective it's a little bit more cumbersome to put on that's why you don't see a lot of climbing harnesses with buckles like that anymore but I personally love them that's my favorite type of buckle on a climbing harness is just simple standard tri-slide buckles that you can double back. I love them. I have uh, a Misty Mountain Harness with one, an old antique Misty Mountain Harness, and also a uh, Metolius Harness that has one of those. It's a big wall harness, and all the buckles are tri-slides, and I love them a lot. But the uh, more reputable buckles that I got that I'm gonna use in the future, they're in the bin. My splicing bin over there are the Austria Alpen buckles that are on the tree motion light harnesses. There might be some of those components on the, tr the uh, production line tree motions. But anyway, so I'm gonna use those and in conjunction with that to make this waist belt stronger, I am gonna use a thicker webbing. So this webbing wasn't thick enough for this buckle. Granted, I'll be using a different buckle, but um, if the webbing fits the buckle more exactly so that you can just barely kind of adjust it, you're more likely to not have the buckle start to like shimmy all over the place and then cut and side load and snap through there. So that and also just having something with a higher MBS is going to increase the uh, you know, failure point as well. So this only got a 1,200 pounds. My goal is, I don't remember what my goal is in pounds, but for a harness to be CE certified, it has to be able to hold 15 kilonewtons like three times or something. Like they pull it to 15, hold it at 15, release it. Pull it to 15, hold it at 15, release it. At least 
that was my understanding from reading up on it or one of the certifications. So I need to get this to at least 15 kilonewtons. So I have some webbing coming. It is also slackline webbing like this because that's the only way I can seem to find flat webbing with a good uh, pound rating. So I'll be getting some of that. It is also 25 millimeters wide like this one. And it is also, I believe, 100% polyester. But it's a little bit thicker and rated to, I think, 5,700 pounds. So that's how I'll be improving these components. But yeah, I'm having a lot of fun uh, sewing this stuff. So actually, I'll show you one piece I do have sitting around. This was like kind of a thing that I made just to like uh, do like proof of concept, just messing around, kind of making something. So this is a harness waist belt. The inside is just denim. The outside is sailcloth, which does a very, it's so noisy, but it does a really good job of dissipating weight because uh, it's very rigid and uh, strong. But I just patterned this off a of black diamond momentum harness. That's why it's not thick like a tree climbing saddle. When I make my ultralight tree climbing saddle, it's definitely gonna be a wider back and also wide leg loops, probably similar to New Tribe leg loops. But you can see right now, this just has a uh, rock climbing belay loop. But then these, they just, they really do just look like uh, uh, gear loops on the sides, which you definitely use them as gear loops. But they should uh, be able to hold uh, 6,000 or 5,000 pounds if that was if they can do what that test showed but yeah these would be like uh, cloth side these so no heavy metal just trying to uh, uh, figure out a lightweight solution to add some work positioning points or side work positioning points for a buck strap or something like that but yeah I'm having a lot of fun with this sewing stuff and uh, making things and I'm really excited about these splices. I don't know when the next time is that I'll splice some of these ropes to send them in uh, now that I'm kind of busy and back at work. But uh, yeah, I can't wait to update these splices and uh, I'll make sure to, the next video I'll be working on is going to be showing you how I splice this rope. So stay, or splice this uh, core for the Kern Master. So uh, stay tuned for that if you want to try that out and break test it for yourself. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you watching and I hope that some of this was informative and that uh, you're excited about it like me. And I will see you in the next video.